I'm Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land, and in this video we are going to be discussing wine cap mushrooms. Now when I first started getting into mushroom hunting, I was told to be very aware, to be very intentional with certain mushrooms, namely the ones that grow from the ground, that contain a ring around the stem, and that have gills on the underside. I was told to be aware of these ones because some of the world's deadliest fungi contain these characteristics. Not all the mushrooms, and of course there are many exceptions. When we look at the wine cap mushroom, well, it seemingly grows from the ground. It's got a ring around the stem. It has gills on the underside. However, it's not a lethal mushroom. In fact, it's an edible mushroom, and many people consider it a choice edible mushroom. In this video, what I'd like to do for you is help you positively, 100% positively identify wine cap mushrooms so that there is no confusing, there is no mistaking it for any other species that's out there so that ultimately you can go out there and have a real good time hunting mushrooms. The wine cap mushroom's Latin name is Strophaeria rugoso annulata. So it belongs to the genus Strophaeria, and the species name is rugoso annulata. So let's deconstruct that species name for a second. Annulata means annulus, or annulus, which is that persistent ring around the stem of the mushroom. And rugoso means wrinkled, or corrugated, or tooth, which is how that ring appears in the wine cap. You will see that it's slightly tooth, or corrugated, so rugoso annulata. This is a saprophytic fungus, meaning it's helping to break down dead or decaying organic material. You won't necessarily find it just coming straight up out of the soil, and you won't necessarily find it parasitizing trees, but you will find it usually in wood chips. So this is its habitat, wood chips. You may find it in lawns as well, but I usually find it coming up out of wood chips, and it's helping to break down the lignin in those wood chips as a saprophytic fungus. You will typically find this mushroom spring through fall, at least here in Pennsylvania, I usually have the most luck finding it in April and May, especially after a good rainfall. But I'm doing this video now because I did find a nice cluster in the summer months. Now when you look at this mushroom, you will notice that at first the cap is a wine red color, hence the name wine cap. It's burgundy, slightly purplish. As the mushroom matures though, that color is going to fade away, and it might be straw colored or tan. But if you go through the rest of the identification features, you can be sure that what you are looking for is in fact the wine cap mushroom. At first, the mushroom is bell-shaped, and then it flattens out as it matures, and it can be a medium-sized to a rather large mushroom. When it's small, it could be two inches across. As it gets larger, it could be up to six inches across. When you flip this mushroom upside down and you look at the gills, you'll notice that the gills are very close together, but at first, you may not even see them because a partial veil might be covering those gills. That partial veil will eventually break and leave that persistent ring around the stem. As the mushroom matures, the gill color goes from a whitish color to an almost grayish, purplish, almost blackish color in maturity. Moving down the stem, you will see that there's a persistent ring around the stem that fell from the partial veil that covered the gills when it was younger. And the stem can be about six inches tall. Four to six inches is the average height of the mushroom, and it's about one inch in diameter. As you move down to the bottom of the stem, you will see that it's slightly bulbous and enlarged. Now, it does not contain a sac or a vulva like an amanita mushroom, but it will be slightly bulbous. The spore print from this mushroom is dark purple brown, almost blackish, and I do recommend taking a spore print from the wine cap mushroom before you decide to eat it. So are there any lookalikes to the wine cap mushroom? Well, yes, and it all depends on where you live, though. Here in Pennsylvania, I can think of at least three separate genera of mushrooms that may be confused for wine caps. Number one, Amanita mushrooms. However, Amanita mushrooms drop a white spore print, and they have a sac or a vulva at the base of the stem. Wine caps have a dark purple, brown, almost blackish spore print, and no vulva or sac, but they may have an enlarged base. Number two, Agaricus species. And if you're not familiar with Agaricus, I bet you are, you're just not thinking hard enough. The white button mushrooms at the store, those are agaricus species. They belong to the genus agaricus. However, in the wild, they typically have pinkish gills on the underside, and they drop a chocolate brown spore print. And number three, agrosopy species. Agrosopy species may grow in wood chips. However, they have brownish gills on the underside, and they drop a brown spore print. Remember, wine caps have whitish gills at first, and then they mature into grayish, purplish, blackish gills, and they always drop a dark purple, brown, if not blackish, spore print. Now the wine cap mushroom isn't necessarily considered a medicinal mushroom. Most people seek it out because of its edible properties. 
However, when you think about it, every organism in nature, to some degree, contains a medicinal profile, whether it's relevant to human beings or not. When you look at the wine cap mushroom, for instance, and you look at the research, we see that it does contain a pretty impressive mycochemistry that may be relevant toward human health. For example, a study from 2012 put out by the International Journal of Medicinal Mushrooms found that exopolysaccharides extracted from this mushroom demonstrated powerful anti-tumor and antioxidant effects. Then a more recent study from 2014 put out in the journal Molecules found that an extracted lectin, which is a protein that binds specifically to carbohydrates, successfully inhibited the growth of liver cancer cells and leukemia cells. Now, of course, it's not considered a choice medicinal mushroom. If you want to use it as such, do more research on it. Most people seek it out because it is edible, and I encourage you to look for this for its edible properties. Maybe it's medicinal properties as well, but most people are just going to do it for its edible properties because it tastes very good. I do recommend, though, cooking it. Like most wild mushrooms, cook it before you do eat it. Now, there's one more thing you should know about the wine cap, and that is always be very intentional, be very aware of the habitat from where you are harvesting your wine cap mushrooms, or any organism for that matter, whether it's plants, whether it's trees or mushrooms. Wood chips may be derived from pressure treated wood that may have been treated in the past with compounds like chromated copper arsenate. And the mushrooms being good mycoremediators, they can bioremediate, especially the wine cap, they can pull up some of these compounds into their tissues and through their metabolism, they can metabolize these products. Now, it's not to say that all wood chips are like that, and it's probably the exception today. However, it's still wise to just be very intentional with any habitat from where you're harvesting anything. Regardless, I encourage you to get out there and look for the wine cap mushroom. It's a very easy one to identify. It's very conspicuous because of its color. It fruits in large quantities, and the habitat is all around us. I believe we could think of maybe 20 to 30 different spots within a two mile radius of our home that contains mulched wood chip beds. So start looking in those areas, especially after a good rainfall, and you may be pleasantly surprised with what you find. Thanks so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. If you'd like to stay in touch, I encourage you to go to learnyourland.com and sign up for the newsletter so that we could stay in touch with each other. And honestly, if you have any questions about mushrooms, plants, or any identification with those organisms, feel free to shoot me an email. We can connect on learnyourland.com and move forward from there. Additionally, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we can stay in touch that way as well. And you can stay up to date with the videos that I plan on releasing in the future. Thanks again for watching this video. Happy mushroom hunting.